And now to the weather with Hurling Corin. We might see a shower and thunderstorm tomorrow, Hurling. That is right, Bree. A bit of a change later in the day is possible. It was sunny today, though, in Perth, reaching a top of 32.1 degrees just after 2 p.m., from a low of 15.5 degrees around 10 past 5 this morning. There were several towns that got to the single digits in the south today with Jacob and Salmon Gums, both dropping to lows of 6 degrees, the cold temperature in the state. Argyle though in the Kimberley set a new maximum temperature record with 45.3 degrees today beating its previous record of 45.1 in December 2018. Although the hottest town today was Fitzroy Crossing, where it clocked a scorching 46 degrees this afternoon. And speaking of heat, there's currently an extreme heat wave forecast for parts of the Kimberley and North Interior, as you can see there. So temperatures will remain very high right into next week. On the satellite, and we saw some low level cloud in the interior today, as well as parts of the NT. A broad trough will develop over southern inland areas of the state tomorrow, which is what will bring those possible showers and thunderstorms to parts of Perth, as well as the Southwest Land Division from the late evening to late afternoon and evening tomorrow. Nationally and tropical cyclone Jasper is currently over the Cape York Peninsula and is slowly tracking westwards, likely moving off land and into the ocean. But that won't stop the wet weather from continuing, especially in northern Queensland. Brisbane is in for showers and a possible storm tomorrow, reaching 32 degrees, sunny and 35 in Sydney, easing showers down in Hobart, partly cloudy for Adelaide and showers in Darwin, a possible storm. 33 degrees. Back to WA's north, there'll be isolated showers and thunderstorms over the northern and eastern Kimberley, as well as for parts of the north interior. Many towns in the north will remain in the 40s, including four parts of the Gascoigne as well, top of 43 in Newman. It'll be warm and windy over central parts tomorrow. There'll be parts of the region with severe heat wave conditions, mainly inland. There's also the chance of thunderstorms over the central wheat belt and and Central West, as well as four parts of the Great Southern and Gold Fields, most likely in the late afternoon and evening. There's an elevated fire danger warning tomorrow with a total fire ban for parts of the Midwest Gascoigne, Perth Metropolitan, Southwest and Lower West regions. In the city, it'll be mostly sunny tomorrow with a slight chance of a shower and thunderstorm in the late afternoon and evening. So those of you out watching the cricket will most likely be in the clear, fingers crossed. It's set to reach a top of 34 degrees from a low of 18 overnight. On the local waters, winds will be southeasterly up to 30 knots with a swell of around one metre. The sun will rise at five minutes past five and set at 19 minutes past seven. Now looking ahead, any of those lingering showers left on Sunday will be hopefully cleared out by early afternoon, reaching 30 degrees, sunny and 31 for Monday. Tuesday, a top of 33 degrees. Wednesday and Thursday will be windy with partly cloudy conditions, tops of 35 degrees. And finally, 30 on Friday, Brie. Thanks, Erlyn. And finally tonight, the South Australian Government has referred allegations of misconduct against an Aboriginal art centre collective to two regulatory bodies. It follows claims by artists that non-Aboriginal assistants have painted elements of the artwork. Works continuing at the APY Art Centre Collective Gallery in Adelaide, although the organisation has been battling. We are the, one of the most scrutinised Indigenous arts organisations. We've had two reviews done, which has been um, really hard for us to go through. The collective's workers were accused of inappropriately intervening in Aboriginal painting and its managers of exploiting artists, allegations it strongly denied. The National Gallery of Australia postponed a major exhibition, but a review at Commission cleared the APY Arts Centre Collective of any wrongdoing. Now a panel appointed by the SA Government has referred allegations to the Office of the Registrar of Indigenous Corporations and the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission.
For ORIC, it's around management practices and governance issues. Uh, for ACCC, it's around consumer protections, but also uh, contractual arrangements with the artists. For us to be examined so crucially and so hard when there's a, that examination's not happening in other elements of the First Nations art space. Taxing and traumatic, justifying your integrity, justifying your artistic practice, the thing that you're most proud of, this, this process hasn't reached a conclusion yet. The can's been kicked further down the road. The review panel is also not releasing a report, so the public can't see what evidence it thought warranted investigation by those authorities. The panel didn't have powers to protect witnesses, it didn't have powers to compel uh, witnesses to give evidence, so we've gone down that path of them referring to OREC and ACCC. One of the key themes from people who spoke to the review was the need to resolve this quickly so the Aboriginal arts sector can move on and minimise damage. But now the allegations have been referred to two new bodies, we don't know how long it... And that's ABC News for now. Good night.